This is a quick tutorial of the drone maps from the Dixie Fire. I will walk you through the different layers in order to understand the information that's being presented and how to make the most out of the maps. But before I do that, then I want to tell you a little bit about the background of the information that's being provided. This imagery was collected at the request of the Plumas County Sheriff's Office and the Alameda County Sheriff's Office responded with their drone teams in order to collect photos, video, and 360 panoramas. And you'll see some of that information presented here as maps from the air, as well as the panoramas from the air. There was also ground-based video that was collected and is overlaid on the maps. And then we have very recent high-resolution satellite imagery that was provided to us by Planet in San Francisco that we also integrated. So there's a lot of information here, and I'm gonna to cut to a screencast of the web page in order to walk you through in very basic terms of how you can interact with it and get the most out of this particular data. So with that, let's cut to the screencast. Okay, so here we're at the Dixie Fire damage map for 2021. And there's a lot of information that's on this particular web page. Now, you're going to see two different informational boxes that are already set up for you. We're going to be able to close these, but they're there just to remind you of the basic information of this particular data set. So first, on the right-hand side, we have an informational box, and that will reference you to the CAL FIRE damage assessment map as well as to the Plumas County website for questions and current updates about the Dixie Fire. We also have credits for our commercial partners that have been involved in creating this data set, including Planet, Esri for their drone data, and then Survey for the ground-based video, as well as GeoAcuity for visualizing a lot of the information that you'll see here. We can go ahead and close this information box by clicking on the X here at the top right. Next, we have a bookmarks tab. So you can see a bookmark icon here, and that's what these are. The names with the little pins next to them are ways that you can quickly navigate the map using what are called bookmarks. So if I click on Greenville Downtown, that will very quickly take me to Downtown Greenville. We can also go to Indian Falls, as well as Canyon Dam. And you can see it's a very easy way to navigate the information that's on the map. Now, you can always zoom in and out with the plus and minus icons and navigate the map that way, but it's much easier to navigate it by clicking on the bookmarks. So we'll go ahead and zoom to downtown Greenville in order to walk through the different data layers. I'm going to go ahead and close up this bookmarks box so that we have a nice clean page. But you should note that here on this icon with the little book is a way that you can get right back to them in order to navigate to a different section of the map. Now, right away, there's a lot of information here that you can see. So I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and walk you through the different visual data layers that are available to you. So first you'll see this large square here this is a large satellite photo that was taken August 21st during a fairly non-hazy uh, or non-smoky day. It's still a little bit hazy. By Planet, you can see their logo here. This is 50 centimeter or about half a meter or about one and a half feet per pixel. So this is a broader area created by Planet. And then we're overlaying this drone data on top of it, including maps. And then the pins that you see are panoramas. I'll walk through those in just a bit. So I'm gonna click on the bookmark and go back to Greenville downtown, and I'll walk you through the imagery that you see. Right now we're looking at mostly drone imagery that was collected by the Sheriff Department drones. But as we zoom in, you can see very high resolution drone data of the damage, and you can inspect downtown and see a lot of the impact to the community here in Greenville. If we click on a pin icon, this was a panorama collected approximately 200 feet in the air. We're going to click on a pin, and then you'll see this click on link to view 360 degree panorama. You'll want to click more info, and the panorama will pop up. So when you see the panorama, you will want to click on the play icon, and that will load the panorama. And here you can see downtown Greenville. 
and you're able to drag and look around by touching on your screen. You can also zoom in and look at the impacts of the Dixie Fire. In order to get back to the map then, you would go ahead and close the tab, and now you're back to the map. There's over 400 different panoramas across the Dixie Fire, and so you're able to use them as a complementary data layer in order to click on and view and pan around in a more interactive way than just a two-dimensional map. Okay, there's a lot of other information that I want to show you, and this is under a couple of different tabs that I'll walk you through now. The first tab is up here. This is a compare tab or a, or a swipe tab, and we're able to swipe and compare the current status with the drone imagery to past satellite data that is used in the base map. So you can do a, a before and an after to really understand what it looked like before and what it looks like today. So I'll go ahead and click on that and you'll see this swipe icon appear here. You're able to move that back and forward and you're able to, again, compare to past satellite data to look at what was present before and then what is present today. And you're able to really compare the difference between the two. You can turn that off by again clicking on the swipe tool and then it'll just go back to the imagery that was provided. There are a range of other information layers as well. This icon in the upper right is called a layers list. It's where you can turn on and off information on the map in order to clean up the map or visualize additional data. When I click on it, you're going to see a range of different layers that are already visualized for you. The blue check mark indicates that it's already on the map. If I unclick it, then it will take it off of the map. Similarly, I have the Plumas County parcels enabled. This is the property boundaries from the county. You can click on those and those will also disappear. So you're able to really simplify the map as needed by turning on and off layers. Now, let me walk you through some of the other layers that are available for you to interact with. We have pulled in the publicly available CAL FIRE damage inspection map. So if I click on this map, you're able to see the icons that are provided by CAL FIRE as well as all of the information that they're providing to the public. Now I will refer you back to the information panel to go directly to the damage assessment map for more detail on the information that CAL FIRE provides. I'll go ahead and turn off the inventory map, but you should know you can click on these icons and you can scroll down to CAL FIRE's photos, for example, to look at the photo of that individual building that they spent a lot of time and effort collecting. I'm gonna turn off that layer. The next layer that I want you to know about is going to be the Plumas County property addresses. So if you want to know the exact address, you can click on a star and that will come up. And this is 320 Main Street in Greenville. And that will give you the addresses for the properties. So you can have the individual addresses as well as the property boundaries if you turn on those different layers. Okay, the next information that I want to provide is going to be ground assessment video. This was rapidly collected video using just low cost GoPro cameras mounted to ATVs. You can see the GPS location collected by the camera as well as the video if you click on the red line here. The video link will pop up with a preview here on the link. I'll click on play.survey and you'll see a viewer that's created by a company called Survey that overlays the video onto a map. So I'll go ahead and click on that and you're going to see a split screen that pops up. So here on the right hand side you're going to see a map from the past. This isn't a current map but you're going to see where this video that's being played here is collected and the blue dot would be the ATV driving down Main Street looking at, uh, this would be August 22nd or 23rd of 2021. So we're able to see a street level view of Greenville as this video plays. We don't have to watch the entire video. If you hover over the video, you can get a preview and you're able to just skim the video very quickly. Similarly, if I look in the video and I hover over the play line, you can see where that 
video is at and where it was taken. We can then pause the video and you can then zoom in in more detail on the map on the right hand side. So as this information loads, you'll note that it can take a little while on slow internet for a lot of this data. This is about 100 gigs or more of information that was loaded to the cloud in order to visualize this data for you. So just give it a minute if it is slow to load or start turning off the different information layers in order to just look at one section at a time. Drones can only cover hundreds or a couple of thousand acres in a short amount of time. And satellite data can cover much larger spatial scales. So I'll go ahead and turn off the video and show you where the satellite data is being used to fill in the gaps. So here you can see the drone information cut off some of these other areas that are still damaged, but you're able to zoom in and still look and get a feel for some of the areas that were missed by the drone data by just looking at some of the coarser resolution satellite data. And so it's not as high resolution and detailed as the drone imagery, but it can be useful for filling in the gaps so that you understand a bigger picture of the impacts of this particular fire. I'll go ahead and zoom out here and you're able to also see the fire perimeter. So the fire perimeter is the most current perimeter at the time of this recording. There is still active fire in the areas, but you can see the perimeter of the Dixie fire as it is currently and overlaid on top of the imagery. So the final thing I want to point out is you can see a couple of these layers are actually grayed out and that's because they're limited to a close in zoom. So as we zoom in on the information or use our bookmarks tab to zoom, for example, to Indian Falls, then you'll see as we zoom in, those layers then become much more active and you're able to then go ahead and turn them on again. So just to summarize, I would come in and use these bookmarks in order to navigate the map. I would close them up as well as the information panel here. And then I would navigate the layers list in order to turn on and off the various different layers. So that concludes this tutorial. We should note that flying drones in an active wildfire zone is highly illegal unless you're coordinating with the Federal Aviation Administration as well as CAL FIRE air operations, and in this case, the US Forest Service air operations as well. All permissions were collected ahead of time in order for the law enforcement teams to capture the drone imagery presented here. So I encourage you not to fly drones in an active wildfire zone. So the goal of this imagery is really to support the communities that are heavily impacted by this fire and our hearts go out to you as you recover from the devastation of, the, of these wildfires, as well as to the other communities that have been heavily impacted and continue to be impacted in California. We hope that this imagery is useful to you or your insurance companies or other stakeholders within the county that um, may find the visualizations to be beneficial and help speed up the recovery. So with that, we thank you very much for your time.